What's up, everybody? I'm Richard. And I'm Sean. And, and we're speaking the language of bromance. You, you doing okay there, buddy? You're kind of... Oh, Richard, I just don't feel motivated as much anymore. Yeah, I get that. I come in, we do our podcast, and you're like, Sean, be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. aggressive. B-E-A-G-G-R-E-S-T-I-V-E. Be aggressive. Be oh my God, is that aggressive. the rest of the chant? I always knew the be aggressive, yeah. be e aggressive. I never knew there was a there was a whole yeah there was a whole rest of it. Oh my, my God. my sister was a cheerleader, so she would like constantly like. Oh, do I cheers know your sister house. was a cheerleader. How do you know that? Uh, re- not a stalker. <laughs> not I, not a stalker. I, I read about it in a book. Of years <laughs> about the history, the history of you went to the future where there's a book of my yes, family. That's exactly what happened. And I opened it because that was obviously if I ever go to the future, that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I did You're like, did we make it as famous podcasters? Is that why there's a book? And you look through, it's like, oh, yeah. And then there's just a big, yeah, it's just a big page that says no. They're like, Sean. From language of bromance. Yeah, they mentioned. Oh, God, it's all bad. <laughs> Sean, the terrible years. <laughs> Wait a minute. I was there for those. Did they mention me at all? I hope to God they. Oh, there I am. Oh, oh, oh. there's a picture. I look horrible. <laughs> Richard, I have uh, recently stumbled upon stories. We're talking about motivation, we're talking about cheerleaders. I found the thing that merges the two. Oh my god, Sean! Wait, is this this is basically going to be you describing to me your Pornhub browser history? Yeah, pretty I much. I knew it. I knew it. So I was looking up this thing on cheerleaders, you know, <laughs> just like on a whimsy. <laughs> you know, you know, you get that weird like you go down that weird cheerleader rabbit hole on the inter- yeah on the search engine. You type it. You're like, I wonder if there's cheerleaders for podcasters. You type it in, and there is, but they like it's degrading. You're like, well, I don't like this. But then you watch it and you're like, well, I kind of like yeah. this. Oh, now I hate myself even yeah. more. Why is this happening to my special place? I guess I guess I'm into this now. <laughs> but Richard, I won't bury the lead because I think it's difficult to on this. But the, this article comes from gizmodo.com. And the story is essentially it says startups in China are hiring women as programmer motivators. And it's just as sexist as it sounds. Oh, hashtag me too, Sean. Pretty much, yeah. You know, like, uh, when you said Gizmodo, I was thinking, oh my God, he's going to give me a story about robot cheerleaders. Like, this is, uh, not yet. This is how this is how the AI is going to kill us. It's going to it's gonna lure us in. It's going to be like a Venus flytrap. Like, hey, guess what? Look, we got cheerleaders. And then we're like, hey, cheerleaders aren't bad. And well, you know what's going to happen is the, the cheerleader robot's going to be like, B, aggressive. B, E, aggressive. You're going to be like, oh, that's cool. B, E, A, G, G, R, E, S, T, I, V, E. Well, I didn't know. That. Oh, wait, why are there so many more? Oh, yeah. oh God, they're are aggressive. <laughs> they're telling you. The, the cheerleader's <laughs> telling them to be aggressive. The cheerleaders are warning us, run. The cheerleaders aren't for us. The cheerleaders <laughs> aren't for us. Uh, before this is over, I'll do the banana cheer, too, because that one's actually a good yeah. one. Be like, it's the other team. They're rooting for the other team. <laughs> <laughs> so Shen Yi works as a programmer motivator. So you think programmer motivator, like, is this a boss? Is this just somebody that maybe comes around and is like, hey, you're doing a good job? Well, you know, that would be a cool job to have. Because here's the here's why I think it would be a cool job to have. So you got all these people. Like imagine imagine the 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 dregs of the nine to five desk job. Like you're like imagine like office space. You know you're sitting in your cubicle. You're hunched over a fucking keyboard and you're click clacking away. And yep. there's no there's you know there's fluorescent light is beating down on the top of your head it feels warm on the top of your head you hear somebody on the phone bitching about you know a bitching about sandy who put fish in the microwave and all you want to do is just take a pencil and just jab it in cindy's eye sandy's eye meanwhile well i mean it's one of those things like that programming job it's like 
you know, everything goes great, everything goes well, you don't really hear much. Like it's like you don't exist. But if you fuck up, everybody knows it. Everybody knows your business then. And guess what? Their business is now your problem. Mm-hmm. Oh. But yeah, I think it would be nice. I think it would be great to be the guy. You just go from cubicle to cubicle and you're like, hey, hey, Dennis, I just want you to know I think you're doing great. And you give him like a like an actual not not a metaf- metaphorical pat on the back, a literal pat on the back. I'm like, you know what? I appreciate well, you. We have to be careful though, because if you hold your hand too long, Dennis might be uncomfortable. Then you gotta get HR involved. I mean, apparently not here because they have these cheerleaders. So I don't know. We'll get to the story. Are they wearing like interesting outfits or not? Because if you showed up to like Dennis in a like a cheerleading outfit, and you're like Dennis, hey, <laughs> just want to let you know you're doing a great job. I want you to be aggressive. <laughs> you're doing a great job. D E O G O O D J O B. Good job. I got something you can decode later down in my black box. <laughs> Richard, is that code? Yes. Uh, and yes. <laughs> it's an innuendo. Uh, I've got a bug, yeah. but let's see. You- there's an antivirus for it. <laughs> let's see you put your notes on this. So Richard, as the name suggests, her job is doing spirit programmers at her company, which involves chatting them up, coordinating social activities, and even giving them massages. You know, I'll tell you what. If I stood up in my cubicle and saw the people in, like, three cubicles over, they've, like, moved the walls to make, like, a volleyball net, and they're like, hey, what are you oh, doing? yeah. I'm like, I'm doing my fucking job. What are you doing? Well, I mean, you look at some startups. That's how they are. It's like, hey, we're going to go play some ping pong. It's like, well, don't we have a project to do? Uh, we'll get to it later. Like, you stand, like yeah, you stand up and, like... You stand up from your fucking beanbag chair, and then you're like, this is not comfortable at all. Does this just make us... Okay, wait, wait. Is, are we just being old men about this? I feel like we're being... Yeah, old, probably a I feel bit. like we're being old men about this by saying, like, you know, I did... Like, the thought of going to... The thought of going to my, my place of work and... There's like beanbag chairs and everybody's playing ping pong and they're hanging out. I'm I'm not sa- okay. Look, look, like I'm not saying that work has to be you know this this terrible drag on my life to where I don't you know where I go in and hate myself and everything around me for eight hours and then I leave. That's not what I'm saying, but I am saying that I work. Like me personally, this is this is this is my philosophy on work in general. Okay, I go to work to make money. That's it. Like that's the reason it exists for me. I go to work to make money. I go to work, I make my money, and then I leave, and then I do all the things that I actually want to do with my life. And that's and that and they're, and they're two separate things, you know. Like I go to work and I make my money, and so that way I have the money to do the things that I actually want to do with the time that I'm not there. Mm. Like I work so that way I can live. I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not saying that I don't want to like my job, but I don't want to love my job. If that makes sense. Your job isn't like your life. Exactly. Like you wouldn't want it to be something where. And, you know, like you talk about a lot of the places where they have like ping pong tables, like a lot of people I've always heard talk about like Google, like Google is like the greatest place to work. They've got nap pods. They've got like on demand food. They've got a slide. They got a haircut place, gym. You're like, you know why they have that? Which how which how 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 fucked up is it that like a like a 45 year old dude's like, oh my god, they have a slide. Yeah, but you know why they have all that stuff is because they don't want you to ever leave. Right. They don't they want, want you, you to work like 60 to 70 hour weeks. Exactly. They want you to stay there and just and do work. And okay, so here's. So so think of it like this, okay? Most people, they work a 40-hour work week, okay? But if you're a programmer and you're there 85 hours, who cares if 25 of those hours you were just fucking off? Yeah, because a lot of times it could be when people aren't even there or whatever. But, you know, it's I guess it's to keep your morale. But, you know, it's like, oh, I got to get a haircut. It's like, oh, cool. Well, 
hey, I know it's five o'clock. Just go get a haircut down at our barber and come back at you know five forty-five, and we can kick this the rest of this project in place exactly. and get it going. Oh, and exactly. we'll just grab a bite to eat, you know, at seven or eight o'clock, and then we can finish up and you know we'll finish up like eleven midnight, and then you know, hey, we'll be back in here at six a.m. Actually, we have nap pause. Let's just take a quick nap at like from midnight to four, and then we'll just kick back in it even earlier. All right, exactly. great, Steve. So then you, so then like it's you know it's Saturday or Sunday, and then you, and then you walk in the door to your house, and then you're like, I was just at work for the last like five days straight. And granted, I spent, you know, maybe a third or half of that time, like pissing around playing ping pong or playing video games or jumping on a beanbag chair or sliding down the slide and going, Wee! <laughs> the reason I was jumping on the beanbag chairs, I was trying to get that rope to hang myself because <laughs> they took away all the toasters. But exactly. But you're, you're, you're so exactly right. The reason that they have all that stupid bullshit there is because they want you there all the time. Yeah. It's like I said, they're paying you for 40, you know, they're, they're paying you for essentially say a 40 hour work week. So if you're there, 85 hours and you fuck off for 25 of those hours guess what you're still there for you're still there doing shit for 60 hours which entails which means that 20 hours of that time you were not compensated Mm -hmm. you didn't get paid well a lot of those places too like they really tried to like uh grind you out for you know five to ten years and ten years is pretty max i think yeah for you to be like oh well i worked at google for five years and get a job somewhere else because uh, I think that's something you learn as you get older. It's like, hey, there's other things outside of work that I kind of miss, like exactly. kids, family, life. Um, I always like the line. That, that would like, be that would be the the thing is work to live. Yeah, don't live to work. I always like the lines like nobody ever gets on their deathbed. It's like you know what? I should have worked a lot more. Yeah, right. Because who gives a shit? Because it's, it's we all we all it's all it all it's all the same end game. Yeah, it's all not a race to, to, not to be Exactly. Not to be depressing about it, but it's all the same end game. So that's my philosophy on work in general. I I go I'm not saying that like I fuck off and slack off when I'm there. Like I go to work and I do I you know, I try my best. I I, I like to, you know, do quality things and make quality things and, and be good at what I do, but that's not who I am. That's just what I do to make money to finance all the other stupid bullshit that I really wanted to. Yeah. But at this, so this is a big thing now in China was with these programming kind of essentially they're cheerleaders, what they are. So, so this Miss, is in China. This is in China. So okay. Miss Shin is a 25 year old with a degree in civil engineering. So she has a pretty legit degree. Oh as my well. God. She has a fucking degree and she's a cheerleader. How do you think her parents feel? Well, I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Shin, we are net, we owe five hundred thousand dollars to you know California State, and you're a god, and your official job title is a fucking morale officer. Well, I don't you, know what what China's universities are like if they're free or not. I feel like they are. Probably. Like, I think, I think you if know you why? get because everybody else, everybody's fucking college is free. I don't know if they like. But I think they judge you and be like, oh, well, yeah, you're smart enough to go to college. So they let you go to college. You know, it's not like, be like, oh, well, you're stupid. So go to college and get a degree in, you know. Ditch digging. Di- well, not even ditch digging. That's actually probably useful. It's more like get a degree in, you know, philosophical octopus. <laughs> oh, I see. So you're saying like an English degree. Like an English lit degree. Yeah, unless you want to be a teacher, you want to write. But even then, like nowadays, like I want to be English lit because I want to write a great novel. It's like, just write it then. Just start writing now. Wait, what should I do to make money? I don't know. Be a guidance counselor. <laughs> uh, let's see. So her job is to keep morale up as well as looking good at the front desk. So she told the Times they really need someone to talk to them from time to time and to organize activities for them to ease some of the pressure. I mean, she's kind of, she's working the front desk, so it's kind of like she's a well, like, what's the the correct term now? Like a receptionist? Yeah, like not a rece- like receptionist or kind of a. Is a receptionist? A, did receptionist become a sexist term? Did I miss that? Because you kind of gave me, you just gave me a look when I said rece- I said receptionist, and you were like, I'm like, what? What's wrong with receptionist? Because it used to be a what they used to, a secretary, I think is what it used well, to be secretary, called. Well, secretary, yes, because well, secretary, because se- well, the reason is because secretary has this connotation of you being subservient to whoever you're you you're in a 
assistant to. Yeah, well, sort of as employee. I mean, you're subservient to the company. But I guess secretary, it's like an individual, t- usually. Right. The secretaries are the real fucking bitches of the place. That's what you're saying? Well, some, to some extent. It's kind of like, hey, I need this done. Do it. You're like, all right. Oh, I don't know I'd if it's still a thing. Secretary. Two coffees. Now. Stat. Oh, I... And wear something sexy. <laughs> I don't know. Do you take your coffee black? Like your man? <laughs> uh, I do. I like my coffee. Like I like my men. Hot and creamy. <laughs> with a spoon in them. Why a spoon? Well, you gotta stir the cream. But why would they have... Why would your man have a spoon? Because it hurt more. <laughs> That's a stretch of Robin Hood min, uh, Prince of Thieves reference. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had to explain that. You know why? Because nobody watched that fucking movie. Oh, a lot of people oh. watched it, but not recently. <laughs> not a lot of people watched it, and everybody hated it. So she's a, so she's let's let's go with receptionist. So she's a receptionist. Kind of, yeah. So the HR exec who hired Miss Shen reportedly said that a programmer motivator has to have certain physical attributes. Noting that the applicant must have five facial features that must definitely be in the proper order. You know where I got this scar? (laughs) Do you know where I got these scars? (laughs) My dad was a bit of a drinker. (laughs) You look like my father. I hated my father. Next. Next. Thank you. We'll call you. Do you have your... Just send us your LinkedIn profile. We'll just... (laughs) This next line actually kind of ties in. Know how to put on makeup. Oh. Joker knows how to put on makeup. That's true. I know how to put on makeup. Yeah, you always look good on the camera. Thanks, baby. (laughs) I like to look pretty for you. And the women have to be more than five feet, two inches tall. So they definitely have kind of a physical. And, like, this is something nowadays that. I don't think you can get away with. Like, you can't hire somebody on looks, right? Like, that's very. No, that's. No, you you just can't. That's you don't do that. You don't, you know, because it's against the what's the word I'm looking for? Oh yeah, law. <laughs> well, apparently not in China. No, not in China. So Miss Zhang, Miss Zhang also said that the applicant should have a gentle speaking voice and, as the time put it, a contagious laugh. So Richard, like mine, would be perfect. So <laughs> Dennis, you're so funny. Oh, shit. Yo, uh, so hey, hey, Denise, do you want to hear another programmer joke? <laughs> I didn't tell it yet. No. Uh, go ahead. You're so strong. Do you lift weights? Uh, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I was, I mean, I did have to grab some paper from the copier earlier. This arm's so much stronger than the other one. What do you do different? <laughs> uh, uh I, Jake I, Wait. Toner. <laughs> toner. That's my toner hand. As the Times reported that on a recent workday, Miss Shin walks up to a male programmer who complained about a sore wrist <laughs> after <laughs> long hours on a fold out bed in the workplace. So these guys in the startup are working on fold out beds. They don't have a legit desk. So I could see being pretty depressed. You walk in, you just put your computer on a cot, you're sitting down cross legged. Tap it away. Dear diary. Dear blog. Today was another shitty day here at Lomo Tech Startup. You're supposed to be doing a, you're supposed to be doing work. Quit working on your fucking web blogs, you sons of bitches. Dennis is still an a-hole. I put <laughs> a-hole because I want this to be a PG blog. Oh, here comes Denise. She's so hot. I'm going to tell about my sore wrist. I heard it masturbating, but I'll say it's from work because <laughs> workman's comp. I'll say it's because I lifted the paper. <laughs> Miss Shin, uh, let's see what, sorry. So the company's intention is for me to give you a massage, though my technique may not be great. I was curious, though, why, why, the, height requi- the, why the height requirement? I don't know. I don't know if that's a, like a Chinese thing. Like if you're taller, it's more attractive. Like they're like they're into gr- they're yeah like they're into girls that are more than five two. Maybe I thought I thought everybody had their own specific kink, Sean. That's what I mean. That's what I feel like in a, in the states. That's what it is. I mean, like you always talk like you always talk about like oh well nobody likes like they always like fat shame girls. I'm like 
there's a whole lot of dudes I know that like big girls. Yeah. There's a whole lot of dudes I know like skinny girls, tall yeah. girls, short girls. Like, I like short girls. I have a, I feel like I have a short girl fetish. Uh, yeah. I mean, your wife is what, like four eleven and a half. Four eleven and a half. Don't you fucking forget it. Because the half makes her not a short person, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, Didn't you say she could legally get like a... I think you have to... No, I think it's. I think you have to be like 4'10". Oh, I gotcha. Something like that. I don't remember. But um, I realized that over the course of my life, every single girl I've either dated or had a crush on, they've all been shorter than me. And I'm not a tall dude. I'm like 5'8". Yeah, we're about the same height. Yeah. Am I taller than you? I don't know. Like I said, I'm like five seven, five eight. Mm. I always thought I was like five ten, five eleven. So maybe, maybe I am a few inches. And everyone I've everyone I've ever dated or liked has been shorter than me. I wonder why that is. I always kind of wonder, like, like what, like, because I've dated all kinds of different girls. I think it's because I'm a weak man, and I feel like I feel like if they're smaller than me, then I then I I can then it's like a it's like a dominance thing. You know, you can at least outrun them because of the short legs, <laughs> right? If I piss them off too much, you just put your hand out and block just them. Just like your mother. Oh. Ha ha, catch me. <laughs> you know what it is, is you feel great when she's like, I can't reach this on top of the shelf. You're like, oh, it's a counter, babe. But here you go. Yeah. Don't you say that on the podcast. We won't. No, we won't. Never. Richard, your wife's behind you. Really? I couldn't see her with the camera. <laughs> with the angle the camera's at. You're good. Does she listen to the show? God, no. Are you okay, kidding me? You're fine. <laughs> Uh, so she says like her technique for massages is not that great. So this is essentially just like a chick that has to look good and just like touch the dude. At the same time, isn't she saying to herself, I went to four, I went through four yeah. years of fucking college and now I have to rub down, a, I have to rub down fucking Dennis because yeah. with hot stones, because he feels stressed because he masturbated too much the yeah. night before. Well, I know engineering degrees are usually pretty legit. So I, I don't know if civil engineering is kind of like, oh, well, we just, we engineer civilization like do you do that's, you really that's, that's what civil engineers do they make fucking they make buildings are you sure yes civil engineer they make buildings and plan they plan cities they handle like things like zoning and and shit like that oh, okay well i didn't know i know engineering like technically that's usually somebody building something but I never knew what the building, like building buildings was on top of that. Yeah. Um, they build, they build the buildings that make that house people that build things. So they're, they're the builders of the buildings that the, that builders use to build more buildings. So this buildings. woman, like she walks in and Dennis is like, yeah, yeah, yeah tap, tap, tap. Like I'm doing this programming stuff. Da, da, da. And she comes up and he's like, hey, massage my wrist. It hurts. And she's like, you know what? I I basically could design this whole fucking building. Yeah, no shit. She's like, motherfucker. I went through four years of fucking school. I got I, I graduated summa cum laude. Oh, he's like, you know what? I got my degree online. Yeah. Thanks, University of Phoenix. <laughs> Uh, Miss Shin told the employee before they left, and she gave him a shoulder massage. Wait a second. This fucker says, my wrist hurts, and he gets a shoulder massage? Yeah, because she's probably like, I'm not touching your fucking grubby dick dick grabbers. You just had that all over your Cheetos and all of their kind of gross yeah. stuff. Dennis. Oh, shit. I see, the or- I see the orange stains on your fucking crotch, uh, you sick son of a bitch. Go wash your hands. Why do you have them on your nipples? Oh, you're a sick mother trucker. No. Will you at least massage my shoulders? If you don't massage my shoulders, I'm going to HR. I'm getting a font. Yeah, you go to HR because the girl didn't touch you. <laughs> We've come so far in this, this world, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> Is that so, is that what equality is? Is that what equality looks like? I don't think I don't think that's true. So it remains to be seen how widespread programmer motivators are in China. But the Times noted that a job search site run by Chinese tech company shows seven companies with job ads for such a position. So it's not widespread, but it's definitely something that there's a few positions starting to open up for this. 
Yeah, I don't think there should be any positions open up for this. I'm um, like the whole th- the whole thing just right now sounds kind of like kind of skeevy, kind of off to me. Maybe that maybe that's just me. I don't know. Do you think we're how close do you think we are from like companies having the on-site therapist? I would I would feel like you'd get more out of that than this. I don't know. I bet Google has an on-site therapist. Probably. You're like uh, I think I work too much. But I really, really like that slide. And the therapist yeah. is like, you know what I think? I think you should go work more. Yeah, you should work a lot more. Wait a minute. Monica, I've, I've got another question. Why don't we have any toasters here? <laughs> well, we did at one point, but we got a lawsuit. We all, we all forgot about the great toaster incident <laughs> in 2012. We didn't realize that toasters and the hot tub that we used to have as well didn't mix. <laughs> To be fair, they all wanted it. That would be awesome. If you did have a therapist on site, that would be tough because it's like, well, is this really confidential? Well, not just the, is it confidential. It's more a question of like, where they're, uh, um, where's your loyalty lie? Yeah. Who are you working for? Uh, I work, I work for Google to, <laughs> and so That's do you. <laughs> you know, my, my, you know, I get paid on how many people work extra hours. Like those 20 hours you worked, that goes to my like, profit that goes to me the more stressed people are the more they come to see you and the more reason they have to keep you on staff so ideally you want to you want to keep people at like this you want to keep people at the steady level of stress yep not enough to leave don't have them dip too low you don't want them too happy but you don't want them too sad either it's all about maintaining the status quo Damn the man. (laughs) So a new 99-page Human Rights Watch report revealed that 19% of China's 2018 National Service Job List ad stated that they were men only, men preferred, or suitable for men. So almost 20% of the jobs in China are only basically only looking for men to fulfill those. So again, like we talked, like that's something you can't state here in the states, you can't That's say a good this point. is men you only. Can't, you can't say men only. That is that is an excellent point. We we actually do have very clear laws saying you cannot have a job that says men only. You can say prefer. Can you even say that? I think you. I think you can. I think you can say you know men preferred or you know or whatever. Well, like say for like casting jobs and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, but that's diff- I think acting would be different though because you're filling a part in the movie instead of just a position in a job. No, that's true. Yeah, for a position in a job, I guess you can't really you can't really say men preferred. Let's see. So this report also included examples of major tech companies flaunting the physical attributes of female employees to entice male candidates. Come work for, you know, Motivation Incorporated, we have double D breasts. <laughs> so listen to this one, Richard. So a 2016 job posting uh, describes its pretty front desk girls and strong security men. So, you know, if you flirt a little too much with that pretty front desk girl and she slaps you, hey, we've got strong security guys to protect you. Or, or that way they're appealing to both straight and gay. That's true. They're like, hey, we got, you know, hot sorority, you know, hot sorority desk girls. And then you're like, oh, and it's like, we have strong security men. Or you could or maybe you could get manhandled by one of our security guards. There's two guys like, Greg, I'm being attacked. I'm in the bathroom. (laughs) Greg, you're so strong. Sean, why does your voice always go up when I come in the room? Sounds like you'll have to call a code on this. Oh, you never calls me a code blue, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get this, but I think we both need to go to HR. <laughs> Only if someone sees. <laughs> Meanwhile, a recently posted job abs brags about its beautiful girls and goddesses. Or if this is the Barney dude, 
<laughs> it probably is. Like, come meet my lovely goddesses. Be like, I. This Richard. So with this, late they talk about their beautiful girls and goddesses. They also post pictures of their young female employees. Like, come see our late night excitement of volleyball and margaritas. Oh, hang on. Quick Google search and see. No, oh, okay. Babe, okay. we're moving to China. <laughs> So, see, they post series of young female There's employees. There's jobs for both of us there. <laughs> uh, so the young female employees on its recruiting social media account as a way to point out its late night benefits. There isn't jobs for both of us there because she's 411. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't get the job, babe, because you're too small. Maybe if you wear these shoes. <laughs> Let's see. So there's an article, a quote from a male employee uh, where he was recruited at a company. And he said it originated from a primal impulse. It was mainly because the ladies at Human Resource that envied me were very pretty. That's something like you don't say. I took this job because the chicks were hot. The whole, the, this, this whole, this whole, this whole story is things you don't do. You're like, come work for us. We have, it's like, it's like almost like a car, like a beer commercial, like the, like, it's like a <laughs> beer commercial. You're like, come work for us where the girls are hot and the security guards are even hotter. We've got Bud Light and chicks with booters. You want to be a bro? The security guards will pump you up and then you could show off for Cindy, the front desk chick. Like men with big muscles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing. I'm picturing like the like basically like the the uh, the stereotypical uh, Japanese schoolgirl that you see in every anime film. Is that big in China? I don't know. Is China big on that, or is that just Japan? I don't know. All I know is that the tentacles go everywhere. Because China's definitely a little bit more closed off on their internet and stuff. So I'm not sure what what kind of they get their rocks on apparently it's girls wanting to apparently it's girls telling them they do a good job so this also isn't the first report of women hired in china with the sole purpose of cheering up programmers in 2015 uh is cheering up in quotes i knew it uh in 2015 trending on china reported on programming cheerleaders the publication created uh, categorized them as pretty talented girls to help create a fun work environment oh shoot so they're like running oh it's like the um the girls that like basketball and baseball games that like have the like hot dog cannon they're like you hear all of a sudden like you're typing away and you just hear "Ah, okay boys it's hot dog time you're choo, sitting choo, there fucking choo, choo, you're choo, sitting there choo, coding choo, and you're trying to like you're trying to fix something that breaks and then you hear womp, 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 womp. and then somebody comes out with a fucking t-shirt can like Badoosh, Badoosh. <laughs> okay guys on the west side cheer Woo! looks like we we had a comp somebody compiled with zero airs you know what that means Kadoosh, kadoosh. Uh, so wah, 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 wah. Oomps, 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 oomps. so their job includes buying programmers breakfast, chit chatting, and playing ping pong with them. So really, this is like these dudes like can't like talk to chicks in real life. So yeah, let's give them this. Let's just let's just pay somebody to be nice to them because they're the you know. No, knowing knowing them the way we do, they'll probably finish about halfway through the <laughs> ping pong game. Samantha, thanks for bringing my toast, but uh, my mom actually cuts off the ends, so could you please cut off the ends? I can't have I butter. I will definitely cut off the ends, and then they bend over to cut off the ends. Like, uh, mom, I have to go. <laughs> What's happening? You're my special place. Uh, and it's over. Now I have to go do work. Aww. So a 31-year-old employee, Feng Zi, told the Times that he was envious after seeing photos of female programmers and motivators online. They were fanning their male colleagues. And now we have one, too, he said. God, like, could you imagine this story in the States? Like, this would be, like, viral. And yes, would. this company would be out of business in a week. Exactly. But, I mean... <laughs> It's, I don't know, like, I feel like, I mean, isn't, doesn't that kind of happen? I mean, when you have, 
I feel like, I feel like to a degree, this almost kind of happens when you, you know, like I've heard, I've heard of places that, you know, you, you put, uh, where you, you, you put your you put the pretty girl up front like if you're running like say like a pretzel stand okay and you got like four women working for you at the pretzel stand are you gonna have the pretty one at the counter while the other three make pretzels in the back yeah but that's a little bit different than having a company like that uh, take the pretzel stand example so you have a pretzel stand you have four employees but then you hire a fifth one that's a cute girl that just goes around and talks with people and helps motivate them or you know make them happy. Like there's a big difference, I think, between being like, oh, we've got four girl, or we've got four people. It's three dudes, and they all look like schlobs, so they're gonna work in back and make the pretzels. We got this chick who's, you know, cute. Let's put her up front. Also, how I mean, like it's like I said, like how motivate who, who motivates the motivators? Because I'll tell you what, if I was a 26 year old girl or 20, you know, like I said, 26 year old, I say girl, 26 year old woman. And I have a degree in civil engineering, and the only way I can break into the tech industry is by rubbing down a fucking schlubby programmer because sometimes he gets a little down into dumps. Yeah. Stories of press. And it, well, the fuck? and the thing, too, like, if you're, the, if you're like, dudes are really bad I'll about go this. to China. Dude, I, That's the way. I would imagine China's the same way, but dudes are really bad. Like, if a girl talks to you, I've read, I saw this in a recent article, like, guys are more likely if a girl talks to them, they are, like, 75 or 80 percent going to assume that they're flirting with them, that they like them. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Oh, my gosh, she's totally into me. She asked you where the fucking bathroom was, yeah, Steve. Yeah, but... Cool your fucking dick. But she let, she, did you see how she said thanks? She didn't say thanks. I know, because she wants to say thanks later. She said it with her eyes and her vagina. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> if she did, <laughs> oh, Billy Madison reference. There we go. Uh, let's. See, what was I was going to say about that. Just, I mean, yeah. So like, you know, she's going to be going around. These dudes are going to be like, oh, she totally like talked to me like twice today. Yeah, but she hasn't talked to you all week. I know because she's playing hard to get. Like, no, she's not. She's doing her job and she hates it. Yeah, she's just she, the lady's just trying to live her life. Just just c- calm down, okay? Easy there, fucking Don Juan. God, you know you get that dude too would be like, "Hey, Samantha, I I brought in some donuts. You want one?" <laughs> what do you Hey, so I'm getting off Look at this donut hole. I'm gonna put my tongue in. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I broke. It. I'm almost done with my 80 hour work week this week, so I didn't know if you want to, you know, get a bite to eat or something. You want to go down the slide with me? <laughs> <laughs> we can share a nap pod. <laughs> uh, so Zoo Zilong, a female programmer at the company, Oh, okay. So they have female programmers. She's probably like, "What the fuck? This is bullshit." Pro- she's probably like, the, "She's in cahoots with the uh, the uh, programming cheerleaders." Like, "Hey, just come over to my pod. You can spend like six hours massaging me." Right. Yeah, you could give me a massage. Uh, let's see. So Z, or- that wouldn't that wouldn't work though. Here's here's the problem with that though, because then then one programmer guy says to the other programmer guy, "Hey, I think." I think Cindy's giving Tammy a massage. That's what they've been over there for the last half hour. Let's go see. Yeah. Let's go see. So then it'd be like two women in one cubicle with like 50 guys surrounding the outside of the cubicle. All of them like, hey, we brought you that report. Touch your boobs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, the report. It says touch her boobs. <laughs> We wrote on it in marker. And like, it's you know, we're gonna take this up to the president of this company. It's like, uh, that's me, <laughs> <laughs> president. <laughs> I concur. This report says touch our boobs. Well, you. I'm sure you're all asking why I called the staff meeting <laughs> here today. You know what's funny is the reverse of this is like men would be like, oh, I would totally be a male cheerleader for a company of women. And that's probably why we don't have it because they don't want it. Which I don't blame them. Men are gross. Do, do, you, do are you okay? Do you need anything? Do you need massage? No, no, I'm fine. Greg, I'm trying to get some fucking work done. Go get me a coffee. I've got a fucking deadline and you're over here wanting to put hot stones on my fucking face. I have a goddamn job to do, Greg. Greg, goddamn it. Just mas- have you even massaged some shoulders before? You've got some very strong, like weak hands, Greg. You're terrible at this. Where's the security guards at? <laughs> this big, like, China the wrestler chick comes over. Yes, 
get Greg out of here. He's fired. He's fired. I deserve this. <laughs> Sail too close to the sun on weights of wax. So Z- Zhu Zialong uh, said she doesn't have any issues with Miss Shin's job, but record- reportedly quipped that the company should hire a male programming motivator. So she wants male cheerleaders. And then she was promptly fired. (laughs) Her colleague Feng, however, appeared cynical about the notion of male programming motivators. He's like, come on, seriously, how are they going to look in the outfit? You're going to see their balls the whole time. (laughs) Have you ever heard them do a cheer? It's like, be aggressive. But B E E E G G rest. And also, he's probably like, what the fuck? Like, how can you, how dare you objectify a man like that? Like, you're just going to have some guy run around here giving rub downs and massaging people. Like, that's fucking sexist. Yeah. She's like, oh, well, what about the women? <laughs> well, that's different. They're not, I mean, they're, mo- they're motivating. They say it with their eyes. No, their eyes, all that's in their eyes is quiet desperation, Greg. Greg, all, all, it's, all we're waiting for is like a knife in a quiet place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe they're used on you or themselves, so it'll crap shoot when they walk in. So uh, the notion of male motivators, so like he was cynical about that. A man chatting with another man, it's like going on a date with a guy. It's a little <laughs> awkward, isn't it? So yeah, so this is weird. So like, so let's say they only have male cheerleaders in this. You know, the guy shows up like he's you know, let's say he's pretty good size because you know he keeps himself in shape. He's like, hey, Steve, uh, you know, I noticed you've been a little stressed. You got that deadline coming up. You want me to massage your shoulders? Yeah, sure, go ahead. You start doing it, and Greg's like, oh god, oh that's kind of nice. What's happening to my special place? Is this what I'm into now? <laughs> oh, well, time to clear the browser history and start <laughs> over. <laughs> I shall make a new life here. Have you ever had a massage by a guy? Uh, no, I've never had a massage by a girl. Like I've never, I've, uh, I've never, I'll say this. I've never gone to a masseuse. I've never gone and paid money for a massage gotcha. guy or girl. I paid for three and all were women. And the one was the same girl. Cause it's uh, my wife's. So she referenced me to her. Oh, uh, okay. I think okay. I could have a guy do it. I don't know why you wouldn't, but it might be kind of weird. Especially when he slipped the extra 200 in his yeah. pants. Hey, we want to end this party, right? <laughs> <laughs> and what's going to be weird is he's like, yeah. Oh, thanks for the 200. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm into this now. <laughs> well, time to burn it all down and start anew. So it's important to note that Miss Shin reportedly doesn't see her position as degrading towards women. So many, many feminist ideas are too extreme now, she told the Times. I think women should be independent, self-reliant, and have self-respect, and that's enough. Well, that's fine, but, this, but how, can you have, how can you have self-respect and self-reliance when you're hired on no other qualification other than your physical appearance, and then your, your primary function at your place of business is to motivate the other men using said assets given to you via genetics. Can I ask a, and I'm being very serious about this question. Okay. What's the difference then between a stripper? Cause that's kind of what they do. Because with a stripper, it's, it's laid out in black and white and it's very explicit as to what you're paying for and what you're getting. So you're paying for the fake motivation. Cause I mean, that's what she's, you know, she does. She's going to go up to these guys and be like, Oh, you're doing such a great job, Greg. Then she's going to go to be in the back like, listen, if Greg fucks up two more times, he's fired. He's shit canned. Right. That's it. But the, I'm saying like you're asking what the difference is between a str- why you're you're asking why is why is this more demeaning than, say, being a stripper? No, I don't mean the demeaning. Reason, well, I guess maybe a little bit. The reason the reason it is or the reason I feel it is, is because these these women that at the, at the office their their function is to be not just not just nice but almost subservient their job there is yeah. to serve the men in a very demeaning way when a, with a with a stripper a stripper is there explicitly like just for the purpose of causing arousal i guess that makes sense cuz in this it's like you know oh well, we can't hire you as a programmer it's like but i have a civil engineering degree in programming yeah i know exactly but you're a little too cute for that why don't you take this other job? 
Right, right, and also, and and, and with, and also with a stripper, it's there's there's a di- you're you're talking about a different power dynamic with a stripper. Mm, yeah. Even though her job is, it's almost like being. It's almost. I, I would. I would make say being a stripper akin to being a waitress. Your job is to pro- provide a good service, but at the same time, not you're, you're not demeaning yourself in front of in front of said customer. I mean, you take your you know you take your top off, you give them a lap dance and whatever, but you're. It's not like you you don't have to degrade yourself in a way that you're not comfortable with. And I feel like these women at the, at this office are like, they're not coming home at the end of the day and like, Oh my God, I feel great about all the hard work I put in today. Like they're coming home and like, I was a, I was being every, I was everybody's bitch. I was giving hot stone massages. I have a fucking civil engineering degree. Well, I think like you said, the power dynamic, like stripper, I think they hold a lot of the power because they do. Hey, no touching. Yeah, in most places it's like, hey, you know, if a dude gets out of line, you call that big ass security guard, he breaks his hand or arm. Yeah. And there's no fucks given. I've always I've never been in that situation, never want to be in that situation, but I always heard it's like you like security guards will fuck you up at those places. Yeah, they will. Um, but like here it's like See see this? This is the farthest I can move my head. <laughs> Why? What happened? Uh I was all about it. But uh, <laughs> I found the love of my life. I did. Mm. Memories. <laughs> um, but yeah, but like here, it's like they don't have any power. You know what I mean? Like if like this seems like Mad Men. Like essentially, this is like Mad Men times. It's 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 exactly like Mad Men. You know, Men. she walks because away. That's, that's the whole reason they hired they hired these secretaries. That's the secretaries weren't there because they were so great at their jobs. They were hired solely based on their physical appearance. I always wonder, like, if that was just more common in like I know probably at those times there definitely was not as if they were good at their job, then it was a. It was like an added bonus. I'm like, oh, and she can type. Awesome. I really like to think that not all men are, were like that back then. I'm sure not all of them were, but I hope like not a majority were. I think that was I. I mean, to a point, you can't blame because that was just kind of the general mentality that was shared by both men and women. But is that the kind of a tirade here a little bit or a, tie, a, a tangent, but is that just more of like the, I mean, we see that today. There's, there's still definitely like if dudes are in power, they take advantage of it. I mean, we had the whole Harvey oh, Weinstein totally. thing. It, we did. So is that really just a story of dudes in power? Yeah. And it's, and it's all, and it's a question of, you know, how much there will, there, how much we let them get away with mm-hmm. it. How much do we as a society tolerate? Luckily, that threshold is getting lower and lower, which it, is great. It, it, yeah, definitely. It still happens though. And that's the stuff that like, I hope nowadays you don't have it as much like back in like seventies, eighties. Like if you had that like uncle or something like that, that, you know, it's like, Oh yeah, don't, don't let, let the kids be alone with uncle, whatever. He's kind of a creep. Uh, you know what I mean? Like people hid that yeah. stuff. It's just like, yeah, uh, it was all about, yeah. The whole thing, it was all, it was almost like a, like a, like a, a family, like, oh, don't shame the family yeah. kind of mentality. Not a fan. Way to bring it down, Sean. Sorry, you started it. I, I'm a, now I'm going to need some motivation. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to need it from you because. Well, this is, this article is about done. I can't talk to Amanda after so this. So Miss Shin basically just says, so there's nothing inherently wrong with someone tasked with improving company morale. But the company openly discriminates against women that look at or sound a certain way, is also viewed as a woman's job, and includes giving massages. It's hard not to see it as anything short of profound demeaning, which I completely agree. So this article, Richard, when we started out, was supposed to be like, you know, I was expecting like cheerleaders running around. You said like the the unks unks sound with them shooting hot dogs. Yeah, see, now now who's being the sexist? Well, no, I was just thinking like it's like motivation, like it's getting everybody pumped. Oh. Motivation. Yeah, that's the whole reason I search for cheerleaders on the <laughs> internet. You sick son of a bitch. <laughs> so I guess, I mean, you know, we look at the states. Like, this is something I don't think would fly. Do you think this will, like, how long do you think that China will see this and be like, oh, yeah, this is a bad idea. we got to put a stop to this. I think, I think it will 
lasts for a lot longer than you think it will and a lot longer than it should. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll last a lot longer than you think it sh- it, it will last. Like, you'd be like, oh, they, they're still, like, you know, five, six years from now, you're going to be like, oh, they're still doing that? Yep, they're still doing that. Yeah, well, is there any sign of them not doing that? No, probably well, not. Well, the problem is, like, you, we talked about that one guy. He's like, oh, yeah, I saw this company. They had these, you know, programming cheerleaders. I was really sad. But then ours got one. It was great. Yeah, it was awesome. And then they put in a slide. <laughs> I mean, my hours went from 60 a week to 120, but gosh, dang it. Those cheerleaders slide. Yeah. And slide. Well, Richard, I guess as we're kind of coming to a close on this, um, what are some of your Richard's closing thoughts? Um, Hey, sexism still exists. Yay. I don't know, Sean. I mean, she has a fucking degree in civil yeah. engineering. Let the let the goddamn woman build a building for fuck's sake. Let her civil engineer. Let her civil engineer the fuck out of those buildings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna engineer the fuck out of this. <laughs> Uh, should we tell the side note to that or just keep that as ours? Sure, go for it. So No, go for yeah, it. Yeah, so uh, Richard and I, we recently got together. Uh, I know, we got to play yes, a game. We got to go back to our buddy's house, play some D&D, and uh, we we're flying a space... Well, we were playing D&D. We we're playing like Starfinder, which is like space D&D. Yeah. And uh, I got... D&D in I, space. I got to be the engineer on our spaceship, and I was rolling some badass dice rolls. He was. So every time I'd roll it... I just say I engineered the fuck out of that. What was it? I don't know, but I engineered the I fuck out of it. Whatever it was, I just engineered the fuck out of it. <laughs> Deploy armor. You don't have armor. We do now because I just engineered <laughs> the fuck out of that armor. I'm like R two D two and rocket and one. <laughs> beep beep boop. Engineer the fuck out of it. <laughs> uh, but I guess the other side note, Richard, is uh, I think tonight we should talk to our wives. And say, hey, we need some podcast cheerleading motivators. And we'll see which one of us gets the black eye. Uh, Spoiler alert. I'll get two. Both, yeah. How'd it go, Sean? Not good. How about you? Not good. I have to leave now. She said, like, we can't be friends anymore. <laughs> she listened to this episode and heard the short jokes. Yep. It's all your fault. <laughs> All right, Richard, let me do a little bit of housekeeping. Visit our website. We're at languageofbrones.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at languageofbro. Email us at eatthebeaver at languageofbrones.com. Check out the LLB Army Intelligence Reports, where we've added a new Twitch stream, which is twitch.tv slash dutchmasters99. Like us on Facebook, and word of mouth is huge. I mean, if you want to be our motivational cheerleaders, just get out there and say, hey, a bromance, language of bromance, download (laughs) on Spotify and other places. Go out, find some people that would you think would love our show, and tell them, hey, check out Language of Bromance and join their LLB Army and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. And when you're doing that, you should definitely throw up a rating and a review because those ratings are so helpful, and the reviews are helpful too, even though all these ones are going to be like, you guys are some sexist sons of bitches. No, we're totally anti this thing. No, I, and I agree. But- we love women. And not like, not like we don't just like oh women. We're not like love women, but we love women. Like when we found this story, I was like, this might be kind of cute. Obviously, I think it's going to go a direction where like this is probably not right. It definitely went way nope. far that way. Sure. Like did. we said, let let that chick, Miss Shan, civil engineering degree, let her engineer the fuck out of stuff. <laughs> That's right. And remember, you can find us as part of the no motivational cheerleaders whatsoever, except Richard and I, because we volunteered the Pod right. Bros Network. The network where we're we're the motivational cheerleaders. The network with the number one rated sexiest male podcast motivational That's cheerleaders right. on the, the internet. The network that is aggressive. I S aggressive. I S A G G R E S T I V E is aggressive. Aggressive. And uh, if you want to go a little bit farther and join our LB Army, uh, go to our Patreon accounts, www.patreon.com slash language of and be like our strongest, one of our strongest members, LB Army member, Chris. See, and then you could be our cheerleaders, and we don't care if you're men, if you're man or woman. Yeah, we don't care. We don't discriminate. Don't care. All right, Richard, is there anything else before I close her out? Nope. 
B- hashtag me too. Be good to each other. All right. Well, that's all the bros we have for this show. I'm Sean. And I'm Richard. And I say we eat the beaver. Richard, peel, banana, peel, peel, banana, peel, banana, peel, peel, banana. Go, banana, banana. go, go, banana. I do remember this. Go, banana. Oh. I, I had to wait until you were <laughs> peeling the banana and then I got it. <laughs>